So one thing that's even more common on UK roads than potholes is small crossover vehicles. They're everywhere, people love them. The cash cars, the dukes. Every other car on the road these days seems to be a small crossover vehicle. And back in 1997, Land Rover introduced the Freelander. And it was the first of its kind. It was the first small crossover SUV. But in typical Land Rover fashion, they completely messed it up. They only offered it with a 1.8 litre petrol engine, which would blow its head gasket every 40,000 miles. Or a 2 litre diesel, which sounded like a bag of nails. They did do a 2.5 litre V6, but no one bought them because they were too thirsty, too expensive. And for some reason, Landrum managed to get almost no horsepower from it. But it did sound quite nice. So then by 2006, they introduced the Freelander 2, which was much better. But it was too little too late, because the Freelander as a brand was damaged. So today I'm in a 2013 Land Rover Freelander, which was one of the last models made before they killed off the Freelander brand. They brought it back in 2015, badged as the Discovery Sport. But this is an interesting segment in the UK market because every other vehicle on the road these days is a small crossover vehicle. And Land Rover don't make one. The Discovery Sport is too big and it starts at 31 grand. So it can't really compete with the cash guy or the Duke. And I think if Land Rover were to make one, it would sell loads of them. <clears throat> This is the 2.2 litre TD4, so it's a four cylinder diesel which produces 150 horsepower, which is enough for one of these. You've got a six speed manual gearbox, which is strong. The engine pulls well. The steering is it's surprisingly agile, it's quite a big, heavy car. The steering's precise. And although this is only the GS model, it's got a full leather interior, heated seats, climate control. Bluetooth, cruise control, it's got loads of extras. Now you could get the HSE model, which is the top spec, which is the one that I'd prefer. The good thing about the Freelander is it's more masculine than the cash coat of the Duke. I would never dream of driving a cash guy or a Duke, but I would have a Freelander. Now on the Mark 1 Freelanders, the window regulators would fail, the bonnet cam would snap, which would be annoying because you need to get under there to top up your cooler. Now you can buy Freelander 2s now for about five grand. One like this, which is a facelift 2013 model, will set you back 10, 11, 12 grand, depending on the mileage and the spec. So the interior is nice, it's well refined. All the buttons feel of good quality, everything works, it's got lots of options. I could do it with an armrest, but then this is the GS model. If you get the HSC, then you get a sunroof, armrest, you get loads of optional extras as standard then. So in this car you've got good visibility, good ground clearance, the engines are strong, and it feels nice to drive. The diesel engines are a belt driven engine. That needs to be changed at, I think it's 10, 10 years or 120,000 miles, so it's quite a long interval. And that'll cost about 300 pounds to do. And they do do an SD4, which has about 40 horsepower more than this, but this is perfectly adequate. I'd recommend the SD4 if you go with an automatic, just because you'll need the extra horsepower. They do do a 3.2 six cylinder petrol engine, which I've never driven. You don't see many of those on the UK roads, actually. Everybody seems to opt for the diesel. 
the good thing with this is it is a proper four-wheel drive and most of its rivals aren't. Most of the cash guys are on the two-wheel drive. Tig one's two-wheel drive. So if you were thinking of buying a cash guy or a Tig one, I would suggest trying to find a late Freelander to be honest. Because they are better. This road is terrible. I mean the road that I'm on right now is a rough dirt road full of potholes. You wouldn't dare do it in this Anjouk. Part of that is in case somebody actually saw you driving in this Anjouk. The 2.2 litre diesel is good on fuel too. I've been averaging 36 miles per gallon. On a run, you'll probably get close to 50, I would have thought. Now, I know most of the people that buy small crossover vehicles never take them off-road. But at least with the Freelander, you'll know that you'll be fine if you do go off-road. You're not going to get stuck. So, if you're considering buying a cash guy, why wouldn't you have this instead? It's a much better car. And I don't think reliability is an issue with the Freelander 2 either, like it is with its bigger brothers, the Discovery and the Range Rover. Because it doesn't have complicated air suspension, this. I suppose the most expensive thing that could go wrong is a new clutch. I've just had a new clutch and dual mass flywheel fitted in this, and it cost about 800 quid. But this one's done 70,000 miles, so if you're going to put a new clutch in every 70 or 80,000 miles, then it's not really the end of the world. It picks up speed really well, this. 150 horsepower engine is all you need, really. So, thanks for watching. Make sure you subscribe because I've got plenty more videos on the way.